BBM and you saw our Trina. And you know, like, what's going on here? How come it's like young people say? Well, actually, I asked them to, to take part in that way because if you've done any reading about from um, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, and if you have a memory of this chapter, it starts off, remember now your creator in the days of your youth. And so it's by orchestration that I wanted a visual aid this morning. I wanted you to see young people actually worshipping the Lord and, and doing something for God, ministering in the presence of God. And I thought they did it fantastically well. I was so impressed with Itrina. Let me tell you something about Itrina, because you, you don't normally see her up here, right? So you've seen BBM and you've seen Youth of Truth. But Itrina, she just wants to sing. That's what she wants to do, she wants to sing. And so she, she was even a bit reluctant to tell me, but I, I got it out of her that she wanted to sing. And I think really, if truth be known, she wouldn't mind singing with BBM, but you know what? Those boys don't really want to know. I've even asked them before. Boys, would you allow a girl in the group? No, no. You know, they're of that age. When they're a bit older, I guarantee you they're going to want girls in the group. But right now, they're, they're interested in that. They're not interested in that. So I said, have you got a song? She said, uh, I don't know. I said, think of a song. Prepare something. And she even came Friday. And I said to Sam, Sam, go and just work with Artrina. And she said, Artrina don't need no work, Mom. She's fine. So, you know why I love my church? Well, I tell you why I love Beacon? Because you do give young people a chance. And I, I, before I even go into my sermon, I have to just tell you this. This isn't a very nice story, actually. It, always, it, it was a horrible story. Part of it's really fantastic because yesterday, my young people were, uh, uh, you know, how I always call them my young people, but I, I can't help it. My young people were ministering yesterday at Cannon Street. They were asked to come and minister in the youth convention. And the uh, BBM were up first, and my goodness me. You know what? The people at Cannon Street love our young boys. And it was fantastic. They sang the song that they sang yesterday. They were brilliant. And the place was alive. It was, it was buzzing. Uh, but trust me, when you used to step top, hallelujah, the whole place broke down. It was fantastic. The music was fabulous. The place was on fire. But you know what? It wasn't our young people that brought the place on fire. There were some young ones, really little, four and five, dancing with flags before God and singing. And I was, I was in awe. I had to say, boy, there's an awesomeness in this place today. The youngsters had ushered in the presence of God in the place. And it was on fire. Every single person who got up to minister, they were brilliant. And I was thinking, wow, I, I couldn't wait for you to, to, to do their thing because I knew they were going to be good anyway. But it was just alive. However, the bad part of the story was there was somebody who came in and sat right behind me. God doesn't know, God, you didn't know what you were doing. I don't know why you put that woman behind me, but she was behind me. And she came in and she was muttering and grumbling. So you know me, I'm kind of, hmm. She had the program and she kept reading the program very loudly to see who was on the program. And she was reading it with a kind of a vexation. I, I, I didn't get it, but I was blocking her. You know, you try to block something. You know, in this church, some Sundays I have to block people too, do you know that? Some people are just chatting, chatting in the worship, and I'm just trying to block them. Amen. So we just say amen. Right? I have to just talk the truth. You know, I was trying to block her. And it went on and on. And then I, I was conscious, just as my young people were getting up, use the truth, and they were just getting up, the woman made a comment. And she said, I know, I think this is this weird one. You say you see all of them young people up there, and then them don't even have no manners. So of course, you know, I'm gonna... <laughs> I'm, I'm ready, you know. I'm ready to say, I hope you're not talking about my young people, because you don't even know. You know, I, my spirit is getting a bit cross. But I had to just hold it in. I just think, let me look and see what my young people are going to do. Because all the young people who had been there had been great. I could not understand the depth of vexation she had. But she carried on and Eric dealt with us. You know, Eric is so much more diplomatic than me. So praise God for a diplomatic husband who, who then spoke to the woman and said there was no need that those young people were in the place of praise and worship when they could have been in the street. They could have been doing anything, but they were in church that night. They were worshipping God. 
They were ushering the spirit of God into a place. Last night, from the babies right through to, to those who were in their later youth, they were doing the business for God yesterday. And Eric dealt with her very nicely. <laughs> she got up and she moved a part away from us and then she came back. But I did notice she wasn't mumbling any longer. She'd stopped her complaining. Remember now your creator in the days of your youth, says the scriptures. I wonder if you've got your Bibles, you can turn to the chapter, chapter 12. I think it is the most fabulous chapter of Ecclesiastes. I love it so much. It seems so poetic to me, and I'm going to just go through some of the poetry and just get to the crunch line toward the end. It is a shame that this church is not full of young people today, because that would have been perfect. But some of us have gone past our youth, some of you anyway, have gone past your youth. But nevertheless, there is still going to be a message in here for us all. I wish my sister who was sitting behind me last night actually was here. Because maybe she would just rethink. And we often have to rethink how we relate to young people. This is a fantastic passage which reminds us. I had, first of all, you tell me this, can it ever be too late? You know, can we have left it too late to remember our creator? I was going to talk about that, but I changed my mind. I just want to give you the scriptures and, and explain what I've read from there. Okay, I hope you have your Bible. Most young people tell me that they only read their Bible once a, 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 a week, and it's on a Sunday when they come to church. That's not good enough. And uh, so I would like to speak to my elders, people who are with me in age and older, Come with your Bible. Let's show our young people that Bible is important. Come, read it yourself at home and set the example for them. Anyway, here's a scripture. And I've got the New King James Version because I just like the poetry. Remember now your creator in the days of your youth before the difficult days come. And the years draw near when you say, I have no pleasure in them. While the sun and the light, the moon and the stars are not darkened, and the clouds do not return after the rain. In the day when the keepers of the house tremble and the strong men bow down, when the grinders cease because they are few, and those that look through the windows grow dim, when the doors are shut in the streets and the sound of grinding is low, when one rises up at the sound of a bird and all the daughters of music are brought low. Also they are afraid of height and of the terrors in the way, when the almond tree blossoms, the grasshopper is a burden and desire fails. For man goes to his eternal home and the mourners go about the streets. Remember your creator before the silver cord is loosed, or the golden bowl is broken, or the pitcher shattered at the fountain, or the wheel broken at the well. Then the dust will return to the earth as it was, and the spirit will return to God who gave it. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher, all is vanity. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Yet he pondered and sought out and set in order many proverbs. The preacher sought to find acceptable words, and what was written was upright, words of truth. The words of the wise are like golds, and the words of scholars are like well-driven nails given by one shepherd. And further, my son, be admonished by these. Of making many books, there is no end, and much study is wearisome to the flesh. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or or evil. Father, we pray your blessing and your anointing upon the word today. Father, we pray that today we will be challenged in our thinking, that we will be changed by your presence, that we will make a resolve to serve you with wholeness of heart. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, for those of you who have been following Ecclesiastes, sometimes in the second service, I know we've had a series going through but for those who haven't, if you can just remember that Ecclesiastes is all about finding uh, the purpose to our lives. 
and the teacher is so concerned that we find the secret to living before we encounter the tragedies, the troubles, the infirmities, the difficulties of life. Actually, before it's too late, before we die. So we begin this last chapter with a word to youth. Remember now you're creating the days of your youth before the difficult days come and the years draw near when you say, I have no pleasure in them. It's an appeal to young people to remember their creator. Not merely to remember all oh, once in a while, oh, you know what, there is a God. I have some family members who, they're quite God-fearing in a sense. Um, if something is going on, they will say, oh, Sam, trust God. You know, they might encourage me, oh, you know what, God's in control. But actually, the only time they will say that is when there is an issue. They really haven't got a relationship with God at all. It's something that they're taught to say. That's not the kind of memory that God is talking about here. When he says remember, he's talking about living in God's presence every day. He's talking about having a relationship with him. He's talking about seeking to discover who God is, the glories of God that we were singing about today, while you're young, before it's too late. Because this teacher knows difficult days are coming. He understands and the, the imagery is beautiful of, of the aging process. Now, folks, I don't want to, I don't really want to make anybody feel a bit strange and cute in here today. But we're going to talk about aging. We're going to talk about some of those things. Because these verses, if you're not sure of the poetry, it's talking about aging. From verses 2 to 8. Marvellous poetry. Let me go through some of those things. Before the sun and the light and the moon and the stars are darkened and the clouds return after the, after the rain. That's referring to the, to the fading of our mental powers. You know, he's saying, remember God before you, your mental powers begin to fade. Now, listen, I, I may not be uh, aged, but actually I understand about the fading of mental powers. Things start to, to deteriorate, don't they? You start to, to be a bit more forgetful. Your brain don't work in the same way that it used to when you were young. And the teacher's saying, remember your creator. Have a relationship with him before these memories start to fade and before you really lose the power of reasoning, that great gift that God has given you. I read when I was looking at this passage, somebody had said that, you know, just how time seems to, to speed up when you're older. Is that true, people? That when you're older, time seems to speed up and speed up? I, it's true, you know, because when we were young, one Christmas to the next seemed like a lifetime. Now that I'm this age, I can't understand how come we're almost at Christmas again. Didn't we just have Christmas dinner the other day? And all now we're trying to think, oh, what am I going to buy for Christmas? The time seems to just speed up as we get older. Something happens in our brain and, and how we live. Remember your creator before that happens. I think some, some comedian had said, you know, time seems to be so fast that just as your face is clearing up, Actually, your mind starts to go. It just seems the process is so short. We just get out of adolescence and, and then we're thinking, oh, you know what? Things are kind of a bit difficult. Mental faculties seem to be like light, but actually the light can fade and the light does fade. Again, I read that there were um, three indications, three indications of old age. Three. The first one is that you begin to lose your memory. And the other two, I can't even remember what those are. So there you go. What does that say? Tell you that. And the clouds returning after the rain. It's like a, a reference to a second childhood. You know, we always say, you know, once a man and twice a child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's the kind of reference here. You know, when you're young, when you were a baby, what did you do? You just ate, you slept, you filled your nappy, that was all you did. And actually, when you're getting back to old age, it looks like that goes back again. You eat, you sleep, and you're in the bathroom. True, any sister? Yes. Amen. <laughs> it's true. Verse 3, the keepers of the house tremble. These keepers of the house, it's an image of our arms and our hands and our arms. Something that we could use to defend ourselves. But now as we're getting older, they get a bit trembly. They're not as powerful as they once were. Remember your creator before that happens. This is what the man is telling us. The strong men are bent. Well, this is me. The strong men are bent. 
something happens to our legs. Please don't ask me to explain. But when I got to 40, I was quite sprightly. But now I'm in my 50s, I'm, I'm telling the truth, things ain't so sprightly. Those strong men are talking about your legs, the strongest part of the body. And they begin to shake and tremble. And actually we start to take a little shorter step. And our heels, girls, you know, I, I ain't doing too badly today, but our heels kind of get a bit flatter. It, it, it's difficult for us. It gets harder for us. Again, somebody read, wrote, and I wrote it down here. It has been well said that the sign of the onset of old age is when our knees buckle, but our belts can't buckle anymore. And I don't want anybody looking at me. I ain't got no belt on today. Then we're speaking about the grinders ceasing because they're few. Grinders have teeth. Teeth, the tooth decay. As you get older, you know, something happens here too. Oh my, it takes us longer to eat any meal now because you know there's sheer teeth in our head. But praise God for dentures, eh? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for the dentists who can fill those holes in our teeth. Thank God for the medical profession. Those that look through the windows are dimmed. That's a, 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 a reference to the fading eyesight as we get older. Cataracts, eye problems, you name it. You know what? If I take my glasses off today, I'll be able to see the first couple of rows, but at the back now, people's features are a bit faded. But when I come to read, I have to be holding the paper out here. Yeah. What's that all about? Now you see what's happening is you're getting a bit more long-sighted as we go. It's, it's a natural process. Natural process. Remember your creator before that begins to happen. That's what we're being told here. The doors on the street are shut. Well, we don't see this so often now. Because that's a reference to our mouth being, you know, you know that kind of mashed in mouth because we ain't got no teeth. Well, nobody's like that these days because we have dentures, right? So we can keep our, uh, the, 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 our mouth in the same place it used to always be. Thank God for that. <laughs> doors on the street are shut. Not any longer, not with dentures. <laughs> when the sound of grinding is low, and I, you know, lots of different ideas about this, but one of the ideas is because our teeth are fewer, you know what, we ain't gonna be eating no cashew nuts, we won't call meal porridge, because it's hard for us. It is hard for us, kind of gumming along. One rises up at the sound of a bird. And when I looked at this, I thought of my mum, and I thought of my son. I'm so sorry, Calvin, I thought you were gonna be out in, in the back, but you're here now. <laughs> I thought of my mum because when the children were young, we used to take our children to mum's in the morning. Um, well, Eric would do it most of the time. I would be going off to work and he would drop the children off at mum's. But my mum would have been, by the time Eric was dropping the children off, up out of her bed, washed, dressed, had a cup of tea, gone down to the paper shop, got a newspaper, and would be reading that newspaper before Eric would drop the children off. Wow. What happened, Mum? I can't sleep so late. late. I can't do it. She couldn't do it. On the other hand, <laughs> I have a youth in the house, and if it's not a school day, I could be shouting, vacuuming, calling, and there's no stirring. <laughs> One o'clock in the afternoon, two o'clock in the afternoon, <laughs> glory to God. Saturday's the vacuuming day, and I'm, you know, I'm shouting, get on with your vacuuming. Is that not the truth? Praise the Lord. God loves the truth. When we get older, we seem to, to, to not need that sleep in the morning. And any little noise can waken us from our sleep. Remember your creator before that comes. When all the daughters of music are brought low. A reference to, to increasing deafness. Don't you find, and I'm talking to my people now, and people who are older than me, don't you find that when you talk to young people, you can even barely hear what they're saying? No, <laughs> it's I work with young people every day, and sometimes in my careers room, they're seated just a little bit away from me, and I'm saying, oh, um, could you repeat that, please? Um, could you speak up a bit louder, please? Well, I can't seem to hear at all. The daughters of music are brought low. Our hearing begins to go, natural process, natural. And then 
verse 5 tells us there's a word there on the increasing fears that are brought about by old age. Afraid of height. We're frightened of falling and tripping. You know, when you see children playing, they run, they drop over, they cry, they get up and they run in the same place and they fall again and they get up and they cry. And then they... No way. We are now looking carefully at where we're sitting. <laughs> we're plotting our pathway. I just saw, I just saw Sabrina going in there, just keep, boys have my field in here, Come, just coming in here. You understand? We get fretful of where we step, scared of a fall, scared of a trip. Actually, could spell death for us, a trip or a fall. People who are older, they're more vulnerable, they feel it, they're, they're in their homes. They only kind of feel comfortable in their homes. So when we're trying to say, come on out, come on, you know, it's not so comfortable. Remember, you're created before that happens. That's what we're told here. And then, having done all of those things, the almond tree blossoms a reference to what happens to our hair. Mm. And because I don't really like dye, if you should see my natural hair, it's quite grey. I feel quite happy with it, to be honest. But you know what? We have hair dye, and lots of us are there trying to make sure that the grey don't show through. But it's a natural process. Our hair turns colour. Goes white, like the blossom tree. And the, the grasshopper drags itself along. That is definitely me. I'm so sorry to tell you. Only Eric can see this when I get out of bed in the morning. It is a process. <laughs> it is a process. It was not the same as when I was young. We were just bring out of bed. Oh no, I have to be turning in a particular way. And for the first few steps, you're laughing, but it's the truth. The first few steps is all so difficult. Until I, oh, I straighten up. I find myself stiff. And I'm only in my 50s. Hallelujah. <laughs> and finally, let me just check the audience first. Oh, yes. And finally, desire fails. Well, that's a reference to sexual desire. Some people are thinking, I know I'm not old now. I know I'm not old. Because no desire has failed. Well, trust me. Thank God it's the last on the list. The last thing to fail. The sexual desire. Young people, you don't, have to, you don't have to hurry because this is the last thing that's going to fail. So you take your time. Take your time. Well, let's acknowledge, with modern technology, lots of things seem to have been solved, right? Because we can put glasses on. We can put on a wig or use some hair dye. We can actually get various medications to help with sexual desire. Only if they're prescribed, people. Don't go on the internet looking for anything, please. Sorry. Don't bother to go on the internet and look for anything. No one wants. Oh, glory. <laughs> glory to God. Amen. We don't need it. <laughs> Hips and knees can be replaced. Thank God, as I said, for the medical profession. But actually, no matter what we replace, no matter how much dye, no matter how many false teeth, the aging process begins and is going to come to its natural conclusion. She has been kind of preoccupied from chapters one right through to death. And sometimes it seems, Tim was at pace the point this time, sometimes it kind of feels a bit fatalistic, like, oh, you know, you just go to go to your grave and that's it. Because he didn't stand in the privileged position that we stand in, where we can see what Jesus has done. But he was standing in a different position. But even he understood something about this death. He understood. He knew that man would go to his eternal home. That the grave was not going to be the end. I thank God for that little insight that he had there. I wonder if we have made certain of our eternal home. Whatever age we are at. Are you certain of your eternal home? Are you certain? Have you made preparation for where you're going to go to? You've not left it to chance, have you? I hope not. The mourners go about in the street. This is a, a real reference to, to, to a funeral service, right? And we know, we're people of God, we understand that if the Lord should not return immediately, if he shouldn't return in the next few years while we're alive, we are all going to face death. It don't matter. Even young people can face death. We're going to face it. We don't need to be worried about it. Not if our eternal home has been secured. And then there's all references to death. 
the silver cord is snapped. I'm not talking about the spinal column, really. So I just wanted you to get the idea of what this, these scriptures are talking about. When before that is snapped, remember your creator, before the golden ball is broken, something to do with your head again, some injury, some accident, some issue, remember your creator. Before the picture is broken at the fountain, something to do with your heart. Heart disease is a killer. And I tell you what, it's one of the biggest killers that we have in the Western world. Before that should take hold, remember your creator. Before the wheel is broken at the cistern, that's to do with our blood and our circulation. And I think of all kinds of diseases that could stop that. Your cancers, which we were talking about at a prayer meeting the other day. Before that, remember your creator. The body will crumble. Dust will return to dust. But actually, God who gave the spirit, is expecting to receive our spirit. The greatest utility, and this is really what, what this whole chapter is about, the greatest utility, the greatest vanity of all vanities is not to understand the purpose of life and to wait and think, you know, I've got time to work this one out. I don't need to do nothing when I'm young. I can do it when I'm older. But actually, it's quite clear that it's hard to find the answer to life when you're old. And this is serious. It's hard to find the answer to life when you're old. Not many people do. Of course, we've always got stories of people who come to the Lord late in life. Thank God for that. But actually, it is not so frequent. It doesn't happen often. And the statistics indicate that most people who come to Christ come to him while they're relatively young. When they're under 50 years of age. 95% of all believers come to Christ before they're 50 years old. Wow, and most of those before they're 30. That's sobering. It really is. It seems like youth is a time to find God. Youth is a time. And I think there are reasons for that. But one of the things about people who are older not finding God is often, listen, we get set in our ways. And that's the truth. We've lived life and we're set in our ways. You know that sister who was there behind complaining? One of her complaints was, there was nothing in here for the old people. It was a youth convention. <laughs> it was a youth convention. But she's used to sitting in that seat and receiving something. And because it wasn't geared at her, she was upset. She was up I'm only glad it was me sitting there in that seat. And not a young person sitting there. We get set in our ways. Now we get miserable and some of us get a little bit bitter at life. We do. Just a bit cheesed off. And then when we see those young people, those young people up there do we're all kind of bitter. We've lost. We've lost out on our time maybe. And now it's harder for old people to find the Lord. But I thank God for the 5% who do find the Lord after 50. You know what? My kid sang yesterday, his grace is chasing me down. And if you're here and you, you, you know, oh, listen, I've passed you for a long time. I haven't given my heart to the Lord. His grace is chasing you. If you can hear today, today you can be saved. It doesn't matter what age you are. God is a, is a savior. I'm going to just move right to the, to the last part. I leave out all the rest of the things I've written on the sheet. Because the last five verses really are the epilogue of the whole of the book. The searcher reminds us that he has learned to be wise. The only source of that wisdom is the word of God. It's the scriptures, it's the truth of God. That, that's the only source of wisdom. And in verse 11 and 12, he underscores the value of God's word. The words of the wise are like gold, and the words of scholars are like well-driven nails given by one shepherd. That's our God. Our God's words are like gold and well-driven nails. And further, my son, be admonished by them. A gold is something that prods you, you know, pushes you to where you need to be. Prods you along. The word of God is something that you can hold on to in times of trouble. If you get to those trouble days, you can hold on. I can remember, it must have been May 2000, 
when I wasn't at a very good place, I mean, I was fine, I was okay, I was still loving God and coming to church, but I, I was in a place of despair. For most of you, because lots of you have been here for so long, you know that I had one beautiful daughter and three children lost straight after that. I'd lost one before and I lost three straight after, one after the other. Couldn't, couldn't seem to, to keep these pregnancies. And I remember thinking, oh, that's it, forget it. I'm just going to keep Sammy and that will be that. I'm not trying again. That was the end of that story as far as I was concerned. I'd close the chapter. And then just in my ordinary devotion, I came across a scripture and I thought, I've never seen this before. That must have been a lie because I'd read these Psalms before, but it just jumped out and it said this. Though you have made me see troubles many and bitter, you will restore my life again. From the depths of the earth, you will again bring me up. You will increase my honor and comfort me once again. And I felt as if God had said, that's you, Sam. That's you. You've seen troubles. You've felt something has gone wrong. But I'm going to bring you back up. You know, I held on to that scripture for dear life. I held on to and it pushed me back to a place where I could have faith in God again. I didn't know what God wanted for my future, but I could have faith because the word of God is like a gold. It's like a, something that you can hang on to, a nail that you can hang on to. It's secure. And of course, I went on to have two other children. Praise God. Don't go beyond that. Don't go beyond the word. If you're here and you're thinking, you know what, there's other people who say this means forget it. It's not going to amount to a hill of beans. People can say what they like. It's only the word of God given by that shepherd that you can anchor your life on. That's it. Nothing else. People's opinions are just that. But the word of God is truth. Praise God. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. Keep his commandments. For that is man's all. That's how you get wholeness. That's how you move away from brokenness. By fearing God and keeping his commandments. And I saw this and I had to just write it down on my sheet. This fear, this F-E-A-R. Fear is to have faith in God. You know, when we're talking about fear, we often think it's a kind of a negative thing. But fear of, fear of God is something completely different. Fear is having faith in God. The E stands for experience him. Experience his mercy, his grace, his forgiveness, his love. The A stands for all. Gaze upon and marvel at who he is. Oh, marvel at his wisdom. Marvel at his power. Marvel at his awesome acts. We've been singing today, our God is greater, our God is stronger, our God is higher than any other. Stand in awe of that. I've heard some people breaking down in here and declaring the truth of God. Bitterness and entrenchment into a place where we can accept his changes in our lives. Father God, we pray that every young person in this place will have a relationship with God which is meaningful, which is lasting, which will mean that they will be able to have their steps ordered, they will walk in the right place, that they will be hedged in by your word. Father God, I want to give you praise and thanks for everyone who's already said yes to Jesus, I pray God that you would keep your word, that you will hold on to them right until the very end. And for those of us, God, who are a little older than youth, Father, I pray God that we will remember our Creator in the days of our middle age. We will remember our Creator in the days of our senior years. God, we will remember you. Because you're worth considering. You're worth memory. You're worth relating to God. You're worth listening to. And today, as a fellowship, we resolve to fear our God. And to keep his commandments. We're going to all have faith in who you are. We want to experience you more and more. We want to stand in awe of who you are. And we want to resolve to obey you. Will you hold us to it, God? Hold us to it. As we seek to do your will. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.